Um, this tale starts on Tenby Beach. Uh, it's 2000, late 2014. Um, I'd been involved in a satellite project in 2012-2013, uh, this one, um, and we were using a, an FSK radio device, RFM22, um, for satellite communications. Uh, 100 milliwatts, uh, frequency agile, which is handy, we could make Dumas and FSK ready. Uh, the big problem, we knew we'd hear those, the big problem was getting the data back, digital data, because as all good amateur radio projects must do, we must be able to turn it off if we're asked. Um, we did manage it. We were able to, to communicate with it at circa uh, 850 kilometers with a quadrophilic helix. Uh, and we were able to receive it if you use something like uh, a Yagi. Uh, about 1,300 kilometers, but it needed some fancy LNA, uh, LNAs. Uh, the Super Amp was the best, 400 quid's worth. Um, the G4 DDK, which I don't think is made anymore, that did the job as well, but not quite as good. But we needed that on the ground to receive the FSK data. Uh, to get the uplink working, uh, we needed a lot of power. Um, we, were man we managed to get packets to it, and it responded about 2,500 kilometers. Uh, it took 25 watts. Anyway, that, that, that project worked, and that was stretching the limits of FSK devices. So when Semtech announced LoRa devices in 2013, it immediately piqued my interest because LoRa devices operated below noise level. An FSK device that you're normally used to using uh, needs somewhere between 5 and 10 dB above noise to operate. It can be a bit lower than that at very low bandwidths. But in general, they don't operate below noise level. Lower devices do. So there's a potential gain there of 25 dBs over what we'd proved to work in a satellite. And I thought, that is interesting. Because that's about, what is it, uh, 20 times further, 25 times further, something like that, I can't remember. Back to Tenby Beach. Um, here, here, because I knew so much about the limits of FSK comms, I arranged a test. Um, with an FSK transmitter in there, severely attenuated, so that the effective range was only about 100 meters or so. I had a receiver which pinged every time it received the packets, just walked away from it and measured the distance. Uh, the actual distance turned out to be 98 meters for FSK. The LoRa device, gosh, uh, I got over a kilometer down the beach and it was still working. So we've got 10 times improvement, same transmit power, same data rate. Okay. Uh, I then tested, used my favourite testing uh, location. Uh, if you go just north of the Team Hour in Cardiff, there's a nice view over the Bristol Channel. And if you then go to uh, Blackdown in, uh, by Blackdown in the Mendips, you've got a lovely clear line of sight, which is about 40 kilometres long. Now, I'd done the same test for the FSK transmitter, and we needed 100 milliwatts to cover that 40 kilometres which is not bad, Laura managed it, two milliwatts. Okay? Uh, the, way I, the reason I know that is I arranged the transmitter to send packets at descending powers, so when the transmission stopped, you knew how much power you needed to cover the link. Um, we need to see how much further this thing goes. Uh, cheapest way of doing that, foil party balloons, they're about a fiver, fivers with a gas in them. You build a little tiny tracker, uh, you launch them. If you fill it right, it goes up to about eight kilometers uh, and floats along. Uh, this is the path that one took. This is, that was January the 4th, 2015, I think. Um, it ended up going about a thousand kilometers in total. Um, but uh, there was only one other person in the whole of the country who could receive the LoRa, and he didn't have his receiver up. So I was the only one talking to it. And these are some of the results we got. Um, I lost contact with it at 270 kilometers or so. And that, the balloon is working under ISM rules, because as you well know, amateurs are not allowed to transmit from airborne devices. So that's 10 milliwatts, 269 kilometers. There's some of the, don't be under the impression that LoRa is low data rate only, right? Uh, it can do high data rates. The modern devices can do around, I think it's 60 k bits a second. Uh, those are some of the results I got, uh, 1,400 bits per second, 5 milliwatts, 100 kilometers. Um, 
at the lowest data rate Laura is practically capable of using, 100 bits per second, it took 1.6 milliwatts to cover 242 kilometers. And as it happens, uh, oh, sorry, as it happens, uh, that figure there was at the time the, the two-way communications record because I was sending a command to the balloon from my shed uh, to please send me back a series of packets at 100 bits per second, etc., etc. That's how I got all those tests. I was actually controlling it remotely. What's that doing? Right. Uh, sorry about that. I thought I turned it off. UHF LoRa, that's the current record. Uh, 766 kilometers, 25 milliwatts, 868, the things network if you're interested. Sorry about that. Hmm. Um, right, 2.4 gig. Microsoft Semtech released this device, the SX1280. Now, what caught my interest with this thing was A, it was LoRa, 2.4 gig. So there'd be no duty cycle limits, which is quite a, a significant problem uh, uh, at UHF, because you're, you're stuck either with 1% or 10% duty cycle. Uh, but it also, it, it mentions this. It's got a ranging capability, i.e. it can measure distance. Uh, it sort of works like this. You've got a master and a slave. Uh, the master sends a packet to the slave, the slave picks it up and returns it. So what you've got is you've got two timer flights. And the master eventually comes up with a result which says the time of flight was, and it converts it into a distance. Now, sort of that's where the problems start um, because you've got to calibrate it. Because unfortunately, uh, there is a, a sort of a delay in the transmitter, in the master and the slave when it starts to send the packet, the packet, and the packet actually comes out. And then similarly, the slave has to receive it, process it, turn it around, and send it back. So there's a delay there. Um, and you have to calibrate for that, because it's, 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 it's a constant. And then if you time the, the whole interchange, the difference between the calibration and the, and the, and the actual time is the time of flight itself. Now, Semtech uh, have a wizard way of doing this. Um, and they say, well, you, you take a 100 meter length of coax, uh, and that's what they're on about up here and down here. I said, well, I, I'm too mean. I don't have a 100 meter of coax. So I think, surely you can calibrate it at a distance of zero. I thought, that's reasonable. It's standard. It's not going to alter. So I wrote a bit of software that adjusts the calibration thing, value, until the distance comes down to naught. And then I say, ah, that's my calibration value. So I've saved an awful lot of calories because what I wanted, had wanted to do was publish this because you, you've got to check the calibration value. It depends to an extent on the modules, the bandwidth, the power, the antennas, and all the rest of it. So you're stuck with calibrating it. So a complicated calibration method was not going to work for me because I wanted to publish it. Uh, so anyway, I've got my calibration value. Uh, that's the sum. Um, and that gave me brain hurt. Uh, so I thought, well, hold on a minute. To get to the distance, I just need a fiddle factor. In other words, I measure a known distance. Uh, I get it to throw out the calculation that says the distance is this, and I've got my fiddle factor. Uh, to do that, I choose my favorite location. This is just below Thornhill, the waterboard, uh, just above the waterboard place. There's a public footpath. I've got a lovely view of Cardiff, and you can't see it, but in my garden in the heath, uh, there's a, a slave device. Uh, on the top of a mast. So I'm measuring it. Now Google Maps tells me this is 4.14 kilometers. So I can uh, then come up with my fiddle factor. And I also noted the time because I was operating the ranging at reducing power. Uh, I can work out how much power the ranging is working with. Um, the, the device in particular can be set from 12 dBm to minus 18 dBm. So you can start ranging at 12, then down to 11, 10. And when it stops, you know how much power you need to cover the distance. Um, and I had it working at the maximum range settings for the ranging, uh, the longest distance I meant, um, over the 4.4 oh, 4 .4 kilometer length. And it worked out to minus 14 dBm. 
uh, and that was basically and that was just using standard Wi-Fi antennas that you might have on your router, nothing fancy. So I postulized that the ranging would have the potential to work at over 69 kilometers, which is quite interesting. I tested on my link across the channel again, and, and that's part of the reason why it's such a nice link, because it's you know steep at either end and <coughs> whatever. There's no Fres there's very limited Fresnel returns effect. And it works. Uh, and that set a, a distance record for 2.4 lower at the time. I think at, at that point, the furthest distance anyone had used that had been 11 kilometers. So I think, ah, oh, this is promising. So, uh, oh, that, that's the transmitting end of just above Cardiff. Lovely view. Uh, and that's, black, that's on Black Down. Wonderful view, eh? Uh, now, I measured it as 40.745 with my calibration and fiddle factor. And the distance taken from Google Maps was 40.65. So I was getting an accuracy of about 0.2%. It's quite reasonable. Uh, remember, this is, this is measuring the, the distance by directly measuring the time of flight between the two locations. Uh, time for another balloon test. Another balloon. Uh, that's the tracker. If you, you need to keep these trackers under about 25, 20 grams. Uh, you can just about see the antenna at the bottom, quarter wave with radials. Um, it's Arduino powered, um, and the, the, the GPS on the top. Uh, that, get, that gets launched. It, it goes far faster than we thought because it got up to a couple of kilometers and it, it was bounding along at about 70 miles an hour. Um, so we couldn't follow it in the car. So we found a playing field just by Chapstow. And I get my cheap Wi-Fi Yagi out, uh, and, uh, and I'm tracking it that way. And that is, uh, the tracker's got a GPS, uh, this receiver's got a GPS, so it's calculating the distance, which it says is 85325, and the ranging is telling me it's 85133. Um, that is the longest distance that I think the ranging has been tested to. Uh, it's sort of on the limit. You can tell that the tracking is coming back at minus 23 dB below noise. So that's the, the tracking telemetry from the balloon. So it's well under the noise level. Uh, another test. This is a proper high altitude balloon. You've probably seen these, polystyrene box. Uh, the tracker is there, uh, running on uh, three AA batteries. And the GPS is there. Uh, this gets launched from a field uh, in North Devon, across the channel, and I lose contact with it at 89 kilometers. And again, it's still operating at well below noise, minus 20 below noise. Uh, the ranging had stopped working at this point. Uh, the ranging can't operate at the same very long distances that the LoRa device is capable of. Uh, that is... I believe is the currently the, the record for 2.4 gig LoRa. It's, I, I mentioned earlier at the beginning, it's, it's often assumed that LoRa is a slow speed medium. Well, it, at its best and its longest distance, yes, that's true. But it, it's also got below noise, prob, uh, below noise performance um, at very high data rates. And, and that 2.4 gig module can operate uh, at 200 k bits and I think it's operating at about minus seven and a half dB below noise at that point. Uh, and I reckon you get about six kilometers out of it. Uh, but that device also has a, a very quirky, very uh, not heard of before mode called FLRC, which is fast long range communication. And that has uh, roughly the same sensitivity. I have had it working and tested. And that can go up to 650 K bits. So this has the possibility, I guess, for getting digital camera stuff back. But as far as I know, nobody's tried it yet. Uh, if you want any more information on that, there is a library for the 1280 uh, I've done. Uh, it's meant to be easy to understand because I don't understand code very much myself. Uh, and that's all I wanted to talk about. Thank you. Thank you.